Hello everybody and welcome to RBPPA Productions. I'm Jesse and I'm your host as always and today we're going to be making a special custom build. Now this one kind of came to me as an inspiration recently. Uh, we'll be using some sea blue, uh, special mauve, gloss pink, some purple which wouldn't focus, black, white of course, uh, some basic colors. We're going to always have our little embezzling tools and our little exacto knife as well. Now a quick, f uh, f a quick note. I've noticed that most of the pinks, as far as uh, Sculpey is concerned, they do not like to actually, I don't know, uh, they, they, they retain a lot of air. Now, I've worked this thing for at least 10 minutes, way longer than I normally do because I'm very wary of any kind of pink color, uh, and, it's, and it's been habitual. It's it, All my other projects has been, um, you know, fairly, uh, what's the word for it, uh, fairly, um, fairly fairly good you know as far as being useful and not blowing up or cracking but every pink pigment I've ever dealt with has always had troubles with keeping too much air so that's a quick uh, quick little warning to you so I get the body pretty much roughed out and I get the little curly poof on top of this wiggly tuff um, again this is a custom build for somebody um, and uh, it, it, it's uh, it's going pretty quick uh, again I'm super scared that this is gonna crack in the, uh, in the fire and it did a little bit, which, again, pinks are notorious for this, as I found out personally uh, for me, which, I don't know. But they're always the softest to work with. You know, they're, they're the softness that you want to work with when it comes to clay, but they're just not... They just like to... They like to get a lot of air inside. So right now I'm kind of getting that butt, uh, the little belly, the white belly, roughed out and smoothed on there really easy, and then I'll cut off a little bit here and there to make it uh, tamped on there. And again, I'll kind of gently roll that and adjust it onto there. Then I'm going to get the Kirby-esque feet put on there, because this thing is like a balloon rabbit. Uh, it's the best way to describe it, I guess. Uh, and it has two little stubby hands and two uh, little rabbit feet, a round little oval egg body, and a little tuft on top of its head. Um, uh, truthfully, it's it's a fairly easy Pokemon to make. It's just that dang pink clay, truthfully. It's, it's, that's the only thing that gave me trouble. So I, I messed with the eyes a little bit, and I screwed up the first time around. Uh, I had the eye shape perfect, but uh, the white... Uh, it was a little softer than the blue was, because uh, blue tends to be a little tougher as well, unless it's a lighter blue. Again, these are all my personal exper experiences, because I've worked with nearly every clay there is. Um, but, yeah, the first time it just didn't turn out right. They, they, looked, they looked bad, uh, they were oversized, and I was just like, nah, this isn't for me. So I pulled them off, and I folded them up uh, a little bit, and uh, just tried again. I was like, we'll make the eyeballs smaller and see how it looks again. I'm a, I'm a stickler for proportion and stuff like that, so I was like, well, let's let's just try again. And so I get them on there, and these definitely look a whole lot better. I'm a lot happier with this. And uh, so I'm like, well, I might as well start working on other things. And uh, so I was like, well, let's get a little bit of pink out of the box uh, for the mouth, because it's usually smiling. It's never really upset. I mean, yeah, there were some pictures I was looking at on my off screen, and it did look like that, but again, I'm just kind of pushing everything in, making sure the tongue is in levelly, and uh, giving it a bit of a smile with a uh, showing its mouth and everything like that. And uh, finally, I'm going to be working on the ears. And again, you're going to take some black clay and just place it in a you know a, a diamond shape or a ear like a bunny ear shaped uh, piece of clay, and you're going to smooth that on there gently. Again, this pink clay was a little too cooperative, and I was worried about that. Again, I've never had a good experience with pink clay, and um, I don't know, I've just been really disappointed with it a lot lately. I don't know what's with it. Chemically, it makes it different, but pink clay is really notorious for me. And again, I've been doing this for a little while, and still. So I get Wiggly Tough done and out of the way, and I'm going to start on Haunter. Now, this is I'm going to cut a lot of footage from this because, I'm serious, this clay was as hard as a rock. My hands were cracking every time I was crushing it. And again, my hands are really strong from doing this for such a long time. Uh, but as it says a lot of time later, um, man, this did not want to get mashed down. I had essentially just beat it into the table like a hand with my hammer fist kind of shape and just hit it and hit it until it finally just kind of gave way. And the first time around I made it and uh, it just didn't look right. Um, it, I, it, didn't, it didn't look the way I wanted it to. And um, of course, with the way this clay has been treating me today, the purple especially, I mean, it's, again, all purple clays I've ever dealt with, especially the Gengar tent, or the Haunter tent for this case. Uh, again, I'm, I'm working on Haunter. Uh, this tent has always been hard. I've never found in any store in my local area soft purple clay. And it's, it's specifically these darker purples. 
Uh, it's always unmanageable. I mean, if you want to build a strong structure, yeah, use purple clay. You better have really strong hands and um, a lot of stamina because my hands, uh, they're cracking as I move them around right now. Uh, a lot of tenseness and they don't like to blend. Um, the first time the spikes didn't want to blend the so I had to kind of cut them out and it just didn't look right so again you're gonna have to work this clay so much it's it's ridiculous so if you have clay softener on hand buy some Sculpey clay softener because uh, I'm pretty sure this is what they made it for purple clay <laughs> so I'm getting all the little uh, little spiky things on him and his little ghost wisp tail done to kind of curl it to give it a little bit of a more sinister look and I get him looking pretty good and I finally get that get around to starting to cut his mouth out and make sure to get like that big you know smile they always have and I figured well let's just go up another step because uh, Ghastly, Haunter, and Gengar are really famous for you know knowing the ability to lick which is a ghost type move for some reason but uh, I decided to give him a big old silly tongue and um, uh, make him look a little bit better um, than, you know, just a haunter with gooey, you know, with a ghoulish smile and everything. I was like, well, let's add a tongue and give him a little bit more character. And again, that that's a common thing for me, uh, uh, is themes and a lot of uh, personality with the Pokemon. And again, this clay was so soft um, on the tongue, it wasn't hard, you know, because I was trying to go hard at it, you know, I'm like, I had to slow down, I was like, Jesse, you're going to mess this up. But the, the, the great part about the hard purple clay is, is that it's very resilient and you can really just get your grip in there. You're probably going to go, well, why is the back so, uh, why is the back did it so deep? And um, I did that because I didn't want this to explode because the harder the clay, the sometimes um, it's, it's, it gets more and more difficult to get the air pockets out. Um, as you can see, um, that little cube above has a little bit of a dark spot and that's actually an air bubble and I was really worried about this guy cracking. Again, I don't know what it is about um, purple clay and pink clays for me, but they always give me trouble in crafts. They always cause trouble in crafts, and they're, and they're always just giving me fits. And so I took some uh, translucent clay uh, for the eyes. Uh, I thought they were glow in the dark, but I, I'm not totally sure yet. <laughs> but uh, it still looks good regardless. Um, again, if I ever make another Haunter, I would definitely have more glow in the dark clay on hand, but I made a, a, a couple of. Uh, Pokemon with it uh, to replenish my stock from my shop that I'm starting. Um, but uh, I'm starting to get his little hands, his uh, little floaty claws there. Naturally, I didn't want to use wire because, again, wire, uh, the metal retains heat, and while it's curing, it can potentially crack the clay as it's starting to cool down because the metal will hold the heat a little longer. Now, I get that all into the uh, off to the side, and I'm like, okay, this is looking pretty good. And so I finally had some wood pre stained and everything like that, and I was thinking for once. And I was just getting this uh, pre-fitted up to put on the wood block, my, my signature wood block, and uh, get that done. Um, and it's it's looking pretty good up by now. It's it's just gonna be a simple grass stand because the um, because the characters are so bulbous and out there. I didn't want to add too much onto there because uh, I was afraid it would kind of take away from them, especially how long it took me to work on that hunter. I probably cut an hour's worth of footage. I'm serious, a straight up hour just working that clay to where it was manageable. I mean, it was, you know, one was crumbly and the other one was just super dense. It was like trying to crush rocks with your bare hands. And again, I, again, I got strong hands just because I've been doing this so long, but man, my tendons were cracking towards the end of that, and they're, they're a little sore to be honest. Uh, my hands are, um, but I really, really put some serious work into this one. So I'm getting it all prefab, put some grass, uh, some uh, a little fake flower in the back, and I'm starting to uh, kind of cut up the grass to make it look like a, like a surface, and it also helped with glue as well uh, when I glue down everything. Um, and I'm going to put that in for um, in the oven for 30 minutes at uh, 275. And again, I, I'm getting some uh, tin foil will save your life, guys. When you're doing these kind of projects, always remember to put tin foil down. It's important. So 275 and a trifle later. Okay, so now that we're done, I, I, I forgot that it was still record. It wasn't recording. It was actually in a preview stream where you edit things uh, for your stream. But uh, I already started painting the grassy base, and I just have just so happened to look up. And I was like, oh crap, I got to start on this. So, uh, <coughs> so I get this ready, and I'm glossing up these guys really good. And again, this isn't really anything impressive. Again, you just get that satin finish or the gloss finish. And, um, again, I use the satin because it's a little more subtle, but it, it also makes it look good. It still makes it look good. Uh, but again, I start, uh, start really laying it on there, and, uh, I noticed that the wiggly tail cracked in a couple places, and I was so mad, because I, I expected it, you know, it wasn't something that was shocking for me. I was like, oh, crap, here we go. 
but uh, you know, it, uh, thanks to the satin glaze, it, it fills it in and it kind of uh, blends it because the satin is uh, clear. The the ambient uh, color texture, and I suppose the light kind of hides it from it. So uh, it doesn't look bad and it's not noticeable. Um, but you know, again, if you're gonna get pink clay, be forewarned. Work it really good and get all of those air pockets out of there because again, pink clay for some reason. Some inconceivable reason just loves, and I mean loves, to crack. So I get it all glued up, and it's looking pretty great, guys. And again, this is a custom piece for someone I know. Um, I hope you guys enjoy it. I, I care about you a great deal, and I'm so happy that you told me about your favorite Pokemon, and I hope that this does it gives you a good memory every time of the both of us.